Welcome to the lead. I'm Jake Tapper, and we start today with our world lead and a flurry of new information about the Chinese spy balloon shot down by the United States. Today, the FBI announced it has started analyzing the first pieces of the balloon at its lab in Quantico, Virginia. And senior officials say those parts could be used as evidence in a future possible criminal case against groups linked to the Chinese military. The Biden administration has determined the balloon was capable of monitoring U.S. communications, but sources say U.S. officials believe that the Chinese government did not have the opportunity to gather much intelligence because the Chinese government stopped transmissions to the Chinese mainland once the U.S. found out about the balloon. House and Senate lawmakers were briefed on the spy balloon today, including the president's decision to let it fly across the country before shooting it down. A top Senate Democrat who led one of today's hearings will join us in just a few minutes. But we're going to start today with CNN's Alex Marquardt, who has new information about when the Biden administration found out the balloon was headed to the U.S. The Biden administration and Pentagon facing a bipartisan barrage of questions today on Capitol Hill over the Chinese surveillance balloon. You guys have to help me understand why this baby wasn't taken out long before. And because I am telling you that, that this ain't the last time we've saw brief incursions. Accused of a lack of alarm and criticism over their decision to not shoot down the balloon sooner when it was near Alaska. The fact of the matter is Alaska is the first line of defense for America. In four different, often tense, so, hearings, administration officials stood by their argument that it was safer to let the balloon cross the country while also gathering intelligence on Chinese capabilities. Many Democrats satisfied, many Republicans still rejecting the White House and Pentagon's positions. The next time, you know, we're not going to wait for it to trend go all across my state, all across the lower 48, and then shoot it down. Officials now tell CNN there was a warning from the Defense Intelligence Agency the day before the balloon entered U.S. airspace near Alaska. When it did on January 28th, fighter jets were sent up to ID the balloon, but it was decided to let it fly on on a northern trajectory and collect intelligence on it. Suddenly, an official said it took a strange turn south towards the lower 48 states, crossing into Idaho on January 31st and eastwards across the country. After it was decided to not shoot the balloon down over land, U-2 spy planes were sent up to monitor it, the administration determining that the balloon was no longer sending information back to China, sources say, as the U.S. tried to block it from gathering more intelligence on sensitive U.S. military sites. This balloon, just a small part of a broader, years-long Chinese balloon program whose fleet, the State Department says, flew over more than 40 countries. The United States was not the only target of this broader program, which has violated the sovereignty of countries across five continents. The balloon program run by China's military, officials say, in part out of Hainan province, the southernmost tip of China. China outraged at the shootdown, demanding the return of the remnants of the balloon. The U.S. refusing, instead sending the recovered pieces from the ocean to an FBI lab, where analysis has begun. So far, that includes the canopy, wiring, and some electronics. And Jake, we learned today that the balloon was carrying sophisticated electronics capable of surveillance of signals like communications and radar. Now, so far, what the FBI has collected has just been what was on the surface of the water just off of South Carolina. An FBI official says they haven't yet seen the payload where most of that surveillance equipment would be. This is the first time the FBI has investigated a spy balloon like this, and officials say that they're analyzing the components of the balloon for possible criminal charges. All right, Alex Marquardt, thanks so much. Here to discuss Democratic Senator John Tester of Montana. He's the chairman of the Senate Appropriations Subcommittee on Defense, which hosted today's public hearing on the Chinese balloon, and also a Montanan who... Did you see it yourself, or did you just hear about it from I did, people? I did not see it myself, but there were plenty of people that did see it in Montana. And you were upset about it. Oh, uh, look, I mean, uh, we happen to have ICBMs in Montana. Uh, people in Montana appreciate freedom and privacy. They don't like anybody spying on them, much less the Chinese uh, communist government. And so, yeah, it's, it's a big deal. I mean, what China did was a, was a major screw-up and an incursion on our air, air, airspace. And no, I am very upset about it. I, uh, I've heard for years that, that China is the pacing threat, and they are, both economically and militarily. 
and uh, I think we need to take this very, very seriously. I think the administration did. I'm not saying they didn't, but but this is a this is a bad action. Yeah, some of your colleagues, uh, Republicans, have said that it should have been shot down earlier. Uh, the Biden White House says that the Pentagon said if we shoot it down when it's over land, that that runs a risk of, of hurting people, Montanans, uh, or even people. There are 8,000 people who live in the Aleutian Islands uh, in Alaska. What do you think? Should they have shot it down earlier? Well, I was I was in the column that says shoot the doggone thing down and do it do it as soon as possible. Uh, I think I think the military made a decision that that wasn't the best option. The best option was to do what they did. They had good reason for what they did. They explained it to us in classified session and and an open session in the hearing that I held, and and I accept. Uh, I accept that uh, that decision is is a decision that was the right decision for them to make at the time. I will tell you what concerns me, though. Um, I chair the defense appropriations with, with Senator Collins. We need to get together to find out what the plan is and make sure the budget meets the needs to make sure this never happens again. And so next time they send one over, because apparently this is the, I guess there were three during the Trump administration and two during Biden, uh, the next time it happens, there needs to be a plan to take it down as soon as possible? I, I believe so, yes. I think there needs to be a plan to deal with it in such a way whether it's either disabled so it can't collect anything or you take it out of the sky. I want to run a little of the sound uh, that, you, that you said earlier today about the threat this posed to the U.S. To know absolutely that this was of no military threat to us, well, I want to hear more about that in classified session, too, because quite frankly... I'm not sure that you can say that unequivocally. So now you've had the classified session. I know you can't tell us classified information, but do you feel that there was no military threat? I'm, I'm, uh, I am much more comfortable with uh, the explanation of what they collected uh, as to being, uh, that. let me put it this way, it doesn't put our national security at risk. One of the Pentagon officials that you're hearing said it could be days or weeks before all the debris is recovered yes. um, from the ocean. Um, when will the public get answers about what this balloon was specifically doing yeah. and what was collected? Well, I, I don't know that, uh, I don't know the public will ever get the answers. That will be up to the intelligence community, but, but I will say this, uh, there's a lot of smart guys that work in our military and in our intel. They're gonna collect it, they'll put it back together, they'll reverse engineer it, and they'll know exactly what they were doing, but it's probably gonna take some time. I mean. The weather is not conducive. They got they had a, they, they said they had a good night last night picking up material from the the down balloon. Uh, the weather's evidently going to deteriorate, so it, it'll put it off a little bit. But look, um, there's one thing that I know about the military. Uh, they are going to go out. They'll get every stick of that uh, balloon and its cargo that they can, and they'll put it back together and they'll make a determination that'll be what's right for this country. It will take some time though. I think the bigger issue here, though, Jake, is that uh, this is an incursion on our airspace. And uh, it's always been a situation where we've said no. I mean, we've scrambled fighters. We've done all sorts of stuff. When there's a, This is a balloon. It's not a fighter aircraft. It's not a bomber. But nonetheless, it still is an incursion on our airspace, and it's, it's illegal. And Do you think he was testing? Do you think President Xi of China was testing President Biden, seeing how he would react, seeing if he was... Strong or weak or all that? I think that, uh, I don't think this happened by mistake. I think they knew exactly what they were doing. Whether Xi knew it or somebody else knew it, this didn't happen by accident. And I think China always tests us and, and, and maybe tests us to see what the political fallout was going to be, whether folks played politics with national defense, which is something we'd never done. But we did see some of that with this situation or how the military was going to react. Uh, like I said, this isn't the first time you know that, that a balloon has crossed into our airspace in different administrations. And uh, we need to have a plan for that because obviously it's not going to stop. And, uh, and I think uh, our airspace is, is sacred to us and we ought to protect it. So listen to President Biden ask what this whole saga has done to U.S.-China relations. Have relations now between the U.S. and China taken a big hit, no. frankly? No. The idea of shooting down a balloon that's gathering information over America um, and, uh, is, and that, break, that t makes relations worse. Do you agree that U.S. and China relations have not taken a big hit because of this? I don't think China relations were particularly good before. Uh, the, only, the only proof point I point to, Jake, is that 
uh, their equivalent to Secretary Austin uh, did not talk, uh, has not talked to Secretary It wouldn't Austin. take the call. Uh, exactly. And, and I think that isn't a particularly good sign because I think people need to communicate and, and let people know. The United States didn't do anything wrong here. It was China that sent the balloon over that came into our territory. Uh, and China has not had a good explanation for this period. And, uh, Although they're demanding the balloon remnants back. They want it back. Well, I got a better idea for them. Just don't send them over in the first place, and then they can keep them.